Hi everyone, Richard here with a companion video to my blog post on creating repeating events via a Google Form submission. Now there are several uh, add-ons out there that work with Google Forms and Google Sheets to uh, create events on a calendar, but I've yet to see one that handles events that need to repeat every Tuesday or Thursday, uh, for example. So I'm going to share a workflow with you um, that gets the job done using a little bit of app script. So we'll get started with looking at the form. So this is a sample form and um, it asks all of the questions you would normally be asking for any calendar entry. So the event name is obviously the going to be the the name of the event and the location. This is actually linking to the specific calendar that we're going to be putting the event on and we'll look at the spreadsheet to see how that interacts at that level. The description is the description field. The start and end date, so this is sort of the date range where we'll be um, adding events to the calendar, um, demarcating the beginning and the end of when those events should be happening. And then of course the start time and end time. And then the days of the week that we want that event to repeat on. So we'll submit that, it'll feed a spreadsheet like this, and then the events will end up on our designated calendar. So let's go ahead and start by just creating a, a quick event. So let's say we're gonna have um, JV boys basketball practice. And we're gonna do that in the gym uh, maybe it's just conditioning and shoot around for the description. And this is going to occur beginning uh, Monday, March 20th. And we're going to go all the way to May 22nd. And this is going to repeat right after school, so let's say at 3.30 p.m. We'll kick it off, and we'll just go for an hour to 4.30 p.m. And now we'll have practice every Monday, every Wednesday, and Friday. So there, I've, I've submitted this, and again, this could be in the context of an event request. Um, I have this set up to automatically go right to a calendar, and we'll talk about options that you have to go from that calendar to another calendar, or even possible uh, ways of incorporating an approval uh, column in your spreadsheet as well. So that's those are options to handle the approval process. But let's just go ahead and submit. So notice here, I don't have any JV basketball practice on this calendar, but I'm going to go ahead and submit this right now. And the script has a trigger to uh, run on form submit, so it'll fire right when the form is submitted. And within you know less than seconds, I have all of my uh, basketball practices all the way till. May 20th as we had designated on the calendar. So what's great about this is it's not a single event but it's a series so if I mess this up I can simply go ahead and delete the entire series. So I can find that first event here it is and I can say you know what I'm gonna just get rid of all of the events and okay and they're all gone. If I want to undo, um, another option I have is, say for example, this is um, just a placeholder calendar. I can actually go into uh, this calendar and I have an option to uh, copy to another calendar. So maybe in this case I would want to copy it to a master calendar um, knowing that it's been approved after I've looked for conflicts and it'll copy over the entire series. So I don't have to copy it over event by event. So let's say I just wanna copy it over to this building one calendar and I just save it. And now I notice I've got all these events there. So there are a lot of options to 
uh, to make it work uh, for you. So let's go ahead and look at the, the spreadsheet um, and then we'll look at the app script as well. So the, the spreadsheet is fairly standard. Um, for you to use the script that I've incorporated in this blog post, um, you'd have to have your columns in the exact same order that I have mine here. Otherwise, you'll need to adjust the variables in the app script. Um, but notice how um, the gym, this location here, is actually uh, determining the calendar ID of which we'll be adding the events to. So there is a lookup table here for the calendar IDs. I only have one in this example, um, but I've parked that formula right up uh, here in row uh, J2, and all that does is simply uh, looks up the calendar ID and places it, or looks it up based on this range of data here and puts the calendar ID. Now the script, you'll notice, is quite small, um, so it's not intimidating. All of this first part is establishing all of the sort of the needed variables, right? So this is not, has nothing to do with calendar event creation. This is just getting the values that you want to upload um, into the calendar. And what takes the most thinking about is formatting the date. So you want to be cautious about how your dates are being formatted. So um, that's why you just can't use the date that's given uh, directly in the spreadsheet. You need to take that date and then format it into a way that's ready uh, to allow for a calendar uh, event creation. So that takes a little playing around with. And then the creating the recurrence. Um, this also is, is playing a little bit with having to create a, a, a split because notice how all of the days of the week are landing in the same cell. So if we have multiple days, we have to have a way to split them out and process them independently. So what this does is um, allows us to do just that. So there's a split and a blank space because um, when, when, when the data is read, it's actually capturing the space after uh, the comma as well. So the delimiter is not just the comma, but it's the comma space. And um, that's just about it. So you would go up to File or Edit and um, Current Project Triggers. And if you want this to run on form submit, you would just add a new trigger. I have it here already, but set it to run on form submit. And um, from then on, your events will just automatically be uploaded to the calendar you've indicated um, when a form is submitted. So it's a, it's a time saver if uh, you don't want people sub submitting multiple events for the same event. Um, it saves everybody some time. So hope you've enjoyed this idea. And... Uh, I will post a link to my blog in the description. If other workflows like this uh, interest you, please be sure to check it out. Um, and the, the, the code here is also available in the blog post for this. Thanks for watching. Bye.